This is Twit. On the line with us right now from uh, from DP Review, Dale Baskin is here. Hello, Dale. Hello, Leo. Hello, Ian. And uh, hey. hello from DP Review Towers. Yay. Well, you're in Seattle, right? We're up in Seattle. That's yeah. correct. Yeah. Welcome back. So you went down to Vegas for NAB? I did. And, and for anyone who hasn't been to NAB before, let's put a little bit of context around this. This is a very big show with over 100,000 people and almost wow. 2,000 companies displaying products. So, so it's kind of the CES of, uh, of uh, camera gear, right? More or less, the CES of camera gear and everything that connects camera gear to your viewer experience. Yeah. TV sets, recorders. Uh, of course, you get a lot of stuff for radio and TV broadcast engineers mm -hmm. as well because it's a big broadcast engineer show. So Absolutely. Some of, yeah. Yeah, but the reason we go, Leo, is not because all of the products necessarily appeal to photographers. Right. But what we see at NAB is very often a bellwether for what we'll see in products for photographers a few years down the road. Well, tell and me, so I see some stuff right there. Now, you've got that the, the, that Panasonic camera that you love so much, the GH5. And that what is that connected up to there? Well, this is connected up to one of our favorite products from NAB. It's from a company called Atomos, which... They make a number of different things, but the main thing they make is off-camera recorders. This yeah. one is called the Ninja Inferno, and it's one of the hottest new products they had. Uh, you showed a photo a minute ago on the screen of a huge crowd that looked like they were at a U2 concert at NAB. That was the Atomos booth. Holy they get cow! So That's many people the coming. kind of traffic you need. Yeah. yeah, they get so many people at that booth that this year they built a stage two stories high so that the CEO could stand wow. on his dais and and talk to the crowd, kind of like the Pope. It's, <laughs> it's a little bit of a surreal experience. But part of what people were there to see was this. And this is particularly a great combination with the Panasonic GH5. Uh, this will record your video off camera in a much higher quality format than you can record in camera. You're shooting ProRes, but it's also an HDR monitor. So you can feed out log footage, which is very flat from your GH5 to this monitor, and you can see what it looks like in bright, real HDR signal. So it, it corrects the S-log footage so that you can see what you're getting, but it's still recording exactly. it in log. Correct. And Got so it. you as a photographer or a cameraman can see what the final product will Got look it. like approximately, but you can get that really, really usable log footage. That's nice. And that's uh, how big a hard, it's a hard drive recorder, right? It, it actually is. Uh, you plug in SSD hard drives that go in a little caddy. And that's really important because when you're recording 4K 60p video in ProRes, you know, we usually talk about bit rates and data rates as like 100 megabits per second, 200 megabits per second. 4K 60p ProRes is about 1,200 wow. megabits per second. So <laughs> okay. you, you really need an SSD. 1.2 1. gigs, gigabits per second. That's insane. That's wow. a lot of data. Wow. So uh, and and is it? So you said something interesting because I remember with my uh, Sony uh, A7s, I think I they re recommended an Atomos because you couldn't record the HDMI uh, was it was more compressed if you recorded on camera what co what comp is this 222444 what am i getting out of this this will actually record anything you send to it over wow. HDMI so that the That's beauty fast. is the GH5 can put out 10 bit 422 color at 4K 60p this will record it wow and that's what you need if you want to get that quality out of that camera absolutely so uh, this is for videographers filmmakers how much is the Ninja Inferno? Is it going to you know, burn my wallet up in the Inferno? I suspect. It's yeah. not. It, it's about $1,000. What? Which seems expensive, but if we put that in context, a couple of years ago, something that did this would have cost $2,000. Yeah. A few years before that, a lot more. So it's, it's actually quite and affordable. In two years' time, standard. it'll be down to 500 with any hope. So. It sure will. I'm and, sure it will. And videographers do like having that big. How big is that screen, that big, high-quality screen to watch? It, it's a 7-inch screen, and it's about 1,500 nits brightness. So it's so bright that you can see it in direct sunlight. Nice. You can use it outdoors. That's a great video tap. So, all right, so that's the Atomos Ninja Inferno. Is that available now? That is available. I believe it's available now. They were able to get us a test unit. If it's not, it will be very quickly. Anytime now. What's that on your right there? The, the, is that well, the, go ahead. Th this is the Black Magic Web Presenter. Ah. And this, this is the quintessential definition of a black box. But Leo, I'm going to guess one of the things you guys know about at Twit is how to plug in high quality cameras 
and use those for webcasting. And I'm willing to bet you guys have invested a fair amount of infrastructure to make that possible. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm sorry to say all of that work uh, now happens in this box. <laughs> you know, Alex Lindsay, <laughs> I, it drives me crazy. Alex Lindsay was showing this off two weeks ago, and I was like, why? Uh, you ought to. <laughs> I was going to say, there's an engineer nutting a noose back there. <laughs> so what, is, what does the Blackmagic web presenter do? I mean, so, it sounds to me like it's a PowerPoint. What is it? Basically, all it does is it has inputs in the back for either HDMI or SDI. Okay. You plug it in there, and then a USB port goes to your computer, and you can convert any camera to a high-quality webcam for web streaming, like a GH5, or if you happen to have an uh, Aria Alexa sitting around, or anything in between. In fact, what you're seeing right now, we're actually using a web presenter connected to a Canon professional video camera no! right now. Oh, that's awesome. And it, it is the definition of it just works. And what's really beautiful about this is this has the potential to democratize the concept of webcasting. People will no longer be tied to their built-in webcams or the cheap little things they buy online. They can use real cameras, plug into one of these boxes, and just go. So what would you have used prior to this? What, uh, what equipment does this replace? Well, prior to this, what we've seen is you usually have to patch together a combination of things, right. sometimes from Blackmagic, sometimes from companies like Matrox. Uh, but there wasn't really a good, easy, all-in-one solution that would work with virtually any camera you have. And this is so simple. And in fact, it's even got a little optional switcher on the front. If you have a little bit more of a complicated setup, maybe you've got two cameras, you can use two of these, oh, wow. and it will work as a switcher as well. How much? It's about $500, which, again, might seem expensive, but you know from setting up your studio, that's oh, yeah. a bargain. That's less than we paid for the HDMI converters we're using to take the uh, HDMI out of these cameras and turn them into SDI, and that would do a, a whole lot more. Probably so. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. What else did you see? Was there VR? Was there VR? We were just talking about VR, yeah, and which seemed like it was the flavor of the of the month in 2016. Yeah, the hype cycle kind of peaked yes. around yeah. then. What, did you see much there? You know, VR is a technology that's trying to get traction, and it hasn't quite. And I think it's for one of the reasons that you were talking about after the last segment. Uh, the viewing hardware just isn't quite there yet, but it certainly isn't keeping companies from building products. Uh, there were a lot there, and one of the really cool ones was from a company called Yi. Oh, I'm really interested in this, because mm. I have the Yi is a Xiaomi company, right? Yes, yes. I have the and Yi Action Cam that is effectively a GoPro replacement for half the cost, and I love it. Yeah, and they make fantastic products, but at the show, they demonstrated a new camera they have based on what's called the Google Jump platform, right. and it's 17 of those Yi cameras in a circle and one pointing oh, wow. upward, <laughs> and I, I forget the total amount of megapixels it captures, but it's phenomenal. Every one of those is a 4K camera. And, and it's it, also about it actually, half the price of uh, the Nokia Osmo. Right. I mean, seventeen thousand oh, yeah. dollars. That's a lot less expensive. A cool seventeen grand, and it's it's all yours. <laughs> but the, the thing that jumps Plus out is bullet. this produced some of the best VR footage I've ever seen, and oh, I've looked at a lot. Four K. Uh, well, all of those are four K. I'm sure the final product is four K. In fact, it's, it's stereoscopic, so it's really eight K. Oh. Uh, I think you're seeing 4K in front of each eye. Right. Of course, wow. that's assuming you have a display. No, yeah, nobody can, to, nobody can nobody can see it, but uh, you say, can that shoot does it. remind me of the reference designs that Facebook had for. for Facebook had similar, a very similar yeah. thing uh, going. This yeah. is the Google version of that. The right. Giant. This is the Google platform. Yeah. Yeah. Nice to see yeah. them stealing each other's ideas. <laughs> <laughs> very, very, very cool. Is GoPro there? Are they still around? <laughs> Oh, oh meow. GoPro is absolutely around. <laughs> uh, I, I won't make any comments there. They actually had their Karma drone, which got recalled last yeah. fall for some issues. They had it there and working. But one of the neatest things I saw that had to do with GoPro wasn't actually a GoPro product. It was from Sennheiser, which is, as you know, a company that makes microphones. And they have teamed up with GoPro to make a microphone to give you better sound with an action camera. So if you've ever used an action camera, that sounds you know, terrible. Leo, yeah. Yeah, I'm guessing you've jumped out of an airplane in sure. a few wingsuits yourself yeah. with your action camera. Yeah, all the and you wind know the sound is, just... is terrible. <laughs> Absolutely. So Sennheiser made this element it's called the Elements Mic, and it comes with a special back. It attaches to a, a Hero 4 camera, and it has the MK E2 microphone from Sennheiser, which is a, a very well respected microphone. In fact, I'm wearing one right now. 
and it provides phenomenal sound, whether it's in waves, whether it's somebody snowboarding. The sound sounds like it should sound like. Uh, you don't have this muffled, awful sound that we're, we're used to. So it's it's a big, big advantage if you're trying to get sound on an action camera. It, it does make you look like you've put a hedgehog on the side of it, but Sennheiser it, really know their stuff when it comes to sound. So that's Yeah, it is a bit like a pom-pom. Uh, the other thing that's really nice about it is you can't see it in these pictures, but if you take that pom-pom off, uh, the dead cat windscreen, <laughs> the microphone itself is on a little bit of a rubber stem, so it's also an isolating yeah. microphone that isolates the mic from the vibration that's of the good. camera, so you don't get all those rattles. And, oh, that's so and it's waterproof, right? You could take it under water with you, which is kind yeah, of... Yeah, they had one submerged in a yeah. tank of water that actually needed to be changed pretty badly, uh, uh, <laughs> but it sat there the whole show and it still worked. Not that the sound underwater is any good, but it's, well, at yeah. least you can, you can hear the gloves. But, but you would think not, but it was actually really good. They really? had a surf video where the surfer went underwater. You heard a lot more than you normally would. It's That's good. That's cool. Actually, I'm, uh, people are always looking for better camera microphones for their DSLR cameras. Mm -hmm. uh, could you use it for that, or, or is, is that not uh, designed for that? You really can't use this particular microphone for a DSLR. It has a custom connector to work uh, with the oh, GoPro. Oh, no. Camera. I'd love yeah, to see one for, because I use uh, the Rode right now, the stereo mic, which is pretty mm -hmm. good, but I bet Sennheiser would be better. Look at that. Uh, Sennheiser has a couple of similar products. They actually have one with a little V in front, so you record really nice stereo oh, sound nice. on top of the camera. Do you see any 8K TVs? Is it time to throw away my 4K? You know, the industry is really pushing for 8K. Oh. They're hell-bent to get everybody on 8K by the 2020 are. Tokyo Olympics. <laughs> I don't have a 4K TV yet. I don't, well, you probably do. I do. Uh, yeah, I'm sure you do. But actually, the, the thing that got a lot of attention this year wasn't necessarily the 8K. It was the high dynamic range television, which will apply to oh, photographers yes. as well because it yes. fundamentally changes the way we can display our images to people. I have the uh, LG OLED, which is a 4K HDR, and it is it really is noticeably, in the same way an HDR still is noticeably mm -hmm. better uh, if you don't, you know, it's, if you don't push it too hard, but it's noticeably better in terms of dynamic range, it really looks great with movies that have dark, dark blacks and bright, bright whites. Absolutely. And, really and, and I think we'll start seeing HDR a lot over the next couple of years. It's clearly the technology that's coming. Uh, the challenge now is it's an alphabet soup of standards. I, yeah. There's the old joke, the great thing about standards is we have so many of them. And <laughs> right. between Dol Dolby, um, I forget what Dolby's is called, but there's Dolby, there's HDR10, there's Hybrid Log Gamma. There's a couple other things mixed in there. Even within the industry, nobody can agree on what is what. So yeah. it, it needs to sort itself out. That's the curse of the technology industry, yeah. getting everything to work together. <laughs> and it's just... But you, if you haven't seen BBC's new Planet Earth, which is shot in mm -hmm. 4K on a 4K uh, HDR TV, that is a mind-blowing experience. It really it is phenomenal. gorgeous. But of course, it's obsolete already because 8K is coming. <laughs> Dale, Dale, great to talk to you. Editor at DP Review. Sounds like you had fun at NAB. You know, NAB is always fun. Uh, it's fun when you guys are there too. But uh, I think this year it was us holding down the fort. And it was. And Padre was there as well. We felt like uh, you, you were doing it. We didn't have to go. Thank you. Yeah. Vegas. Well, we we bring you the most important news for photographers. Exactly. Exactly.